Well, good morning and welcome back to City Line. Now that we all feel very balanced from our previous segment, it's time to go on a Living History Cemetery tour. And if you have not done this, you must do this. This is kind of the only time I think it's appropriate to walk through a cemetery and stop and look at people's headstones that you don't know. So please join me in welcoming Deb Friedman. You are the treasurer, treasurer of Tacoma Historical Society. Welcome back. Well, thank you. Okay, these earrings you have, <laughs> they are off the hook amazing. I don't even know if we can if we can zoom in close. <laughs> Deb, hold still. Just hold still for uh, maybe asking too much. I think I'm asking too much. Yeah, but th they say kings and queens on them, and they're actually books that open. Uh, yeah, if, hello. Because at the Tacoma Historical Society, we tell stories. So, what else would we expect from somebody who is uh, an official storyteller? You mm -hmm. are amazing. And this beautiful woman, who I miss desperately, Melissa McGinnis. You are. Um, our local historian, author, and recent retiree from yes. Metro Parks. Welcome <laughs> back, my dear. Thank you. You look, you have that retirement glow about you. Relaxed. You're relaxed, yes. and you told me that you could actually do some yoga if, we, if you had to if, compete if, you know, the, with the circus with Sasha, who was just on. Yeah, no, Sasha's got me beat. I yeah, I think she has us all beat. beat. <laughs> that? So speaking of ideas that have us beat, let's talk about where did the idea for the living history cemetery tour originate? Was it just, what's the genesis? Well, um, quite a few years ago, about uh, 12, 13 years ago, a group of living historians from Tacoma were asked to come up to Port Townsend. Mm. And they were doing their Victorian festival. And one of the things one of the individuals, a guy named Steve Ricketts, wanted to do was to do a cemetery tour. And because Port Townsend, Old City, like Tacoma, some yes. great names. and But he was concerned people didn't really know the story. So myself and several other people were invited to go up and participate. And we were given our character to go learn about. And we all were excited about it. But I have to tell you, Amanda, the, you know, a lot of us do living history. We research people. We wear period clothing and do all that. But when you're standing on someone's at someone's headstone, there is a sense of real connection and respect and you know we're all part of this all together and it just it was good eerie and it just was very powerful and we did it a couple years in Port Townsend and a lot of us were from Tacoma and we went wait a minute <laughs> yeah thank you wait a minute Tacoma has amazing stories to tell yes you mentioned with them at the Tacoma yes. Society there are fascinating people who've been here over our time a lot of them who have been lost to our memory that's you know, right they weren't the big movers and shakers and we don't have buildings and streets named after them but they were integral mm -hmm. to the making Tacoma Tacoma and so we uh, got together with um Tacoma Historical Society. We talked to the folks at Old Tacoma Cemetery and said, you know, could we do this? And instantly everybody wanted to participate yeah. because it is really very moving for the reenactor. Mm -hmm. And it also makes people realize a cemetery really is a place Living. of stories. It is. And don't forget them. So how many years have we been presenting? Ten at? years. This ten is years. our tenth wow. year. And I have to say, I, I just love watching you talk about this because your eyes missed it up when you were talking about <laughs> standing over someone's grave. And I could tell that there's this energy connection that happens and a responsibility also to honor Huge. this person. Because people become even more integral to time and tapestry the longer they they're gone and the more of their story that's told. So listen, we have some pictures that we're going to roll um, and then we're going to talk with Deb about the theme for this year's tour. But let's roll these pictures and I want you to tell me how do we determine who we're going to portray. So here we go. Well, each year we have a theme. And so that's our, where we start with. And we do some research. And this is um, from two years ago. And so these were, um, oh, Deb, do you remember the name of the the? The, I can't remember the theme, this is terrible, of that year. She was a fascinating lady on the hilltop. She got her degree in pharmacy over at, uh, at um, 
wazoo. But um, once she got her degree, she couldn't actually be a pharmacist. So she ended up coming to Tacoma, and it was here that she finally got to be a pharmacist. And it was just a great story. Walter okay. Neary is always, always amazing. Um, I believe there's Alan C. Mason, one of mm -hmm. our well-known characters here in Tacoma. And Walter Dolly does a great job. Um, Dana Rep. Um, has this is uh, Lottie Nelson. Um, may not hear about Lottie so much because her husband was uh, Nelson Bennett, Bennett Tunnel, the train mm -hmm. builder. But Lottie actually got a lot carried away. And you can see people just getting enthralled as you're telling their yes. story. You're at their headstone, and um, this was gal was amazing because. It was her, frater her sorority sisters that convinced her to keep fighting to get her professional career. And she sang her sorority song and just burst out in this gorgeous oh. voice. And everybody, there's just dead silence in the room. We have a suffragette over to the right. Yes, All different sister. time frames um, of Tacoma's history. Um, some real early Tacoma folks. And then um, we have Roger Peck there over on the left, Peck Field. Uh, you may remember him. Our great oh. gardener, Ebenezer Roberts. Yes. Um, from Point Defiance Park and all the parks here in Tacoma. And so Lawrence always does a great job. Here's uh, Mike Preston is Roger Peck again. And um, it is kind of fun watching the faces because people are really engrossed with what you're seeing on the uh, thing. And our, our one of our leading living historians here in Tacoma, uh, Karen Haas, always brings. And she has found some amazing women that we their names are gone. To most of us, um, and then after Victoria got through with her speech, everyone went out and registered to vote. Uh, of course, she was very powerful, and so uh, the costumes that you can see, the effort that goes into these to capture the time that they're representing, and also to engage mm -hmm. the audience with a little bit of humor, um, as well as some of the stories have been known to bring people to tears, um, and others just get you All burst right. out laughing. So Deb, what's the theme for this year? So the theme is kind of loosely structured each year, um, but this year we were inspired by the book Showtime in Tacoma. Oh, yes! So that means we can do theater, you can do um, music teachers, you can do a wide variety of people who are somehow connected to Showtime. Oh, that was, well, what a perfect segment. I knew we, we could connect the to the circus there. That's right. So, so who does all the research on the various people portrayed? Mm -hmm. Like anything, it takes a team. It sure does. Um, the reenactors themselves are primarily responsible, but the Northwestern, the Tacoma Public Library, does an incredible amount of research for us, providing Super files. Brilliant. The Historical Society helps in some way, um, and we put it together until we have a, a story to go. This year it was easier, I think, because a lot of the research was already done for the Showtime and Tacoma book. Yes. And so that helps as an inspiration for that. But then others are a little more modern. So uh, in some cases, we actually go to the family and double check. Uh, is it okay if we do grandpa? And oh, can you help give us any insight I with that? I love that. So how long does the tour take? From the introduction to talk, to walk through pretty much the loop of the whole cemetery, yeah. stopping at eight graves, it's gonna be a little over an hour. Good to know. So bring bring a little bottle of water or something yes, there. Yes, and it will be warm. And it, yeah, it'll be warm. And then how do people get tickets for the event? You know, we're old school. <laughs> pick up the telephone. <laughs> you call the historical society and say, Friday night, Saturday night, this many people. And we say, okay, we'll put you in a time slot so we can be as respectful of your time as possible. So you show up 15 minutes before, get your group together, and off you go. I love that. So let's talk about um, Melissa in these last few minutes here. How do the reenactors determine what to wear and <laughs> where does the clothing come from? Because I'm like, okay, there's a dress in there I want. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, First of all, the reenactor has to decide what, you know, usually it's like if I'm doing someone, it's someone who I do them at the age that I am. Correct. So it's like um, I recently did one where I was portraying a 60 year old woman in 1960. Well, if you go to the fashion magazines, I'm not in mini skirts and go go boots, right? right? So instead, you look at pictures if you don't have that actual person. Sometimes you're lucky and you've got that actual person, um, and there's a key element. You know, um, a hairstyle that you go, I have to emulate that hairstyle. A lot of the women will get um, hair pieces mm -hmm. and um, things like that. Or if the man has a big bushy mustache and in every photograph there's a big bushy mustache. Or Alan C. Mason holding his big old stogie. You know, yes. you'll, you'll kind of go with that. Um, 
a lot of the folks actually make their clothing. Uh, if you're someone like a Karen Haas, it's an opportunity to, oh boy, I don't have anything from 1932. Yes. Um, I better go make it. Um, some of the theater departments in town have helped us out with the local theaters, Tacoma Little Theater um, and so forth. Uh, okay. And as well as um, just what you can find in Goodwill, to be perfectly honest with you. But you try to find something that's the essence of the time of that person's life. Mm -hmm. And then like if you're really lucky and have some great photographs, right. it really helps you to know yep. that's how they did their hair. And we do try to match people up a little bit uh -huh. to you at least okay. resemble that All person. Right. So do you have any tips or maybe pointers for people who are planning to attend this year, Deb? Call now because we always sell out. Oh yes, we do. Don't just walk up to the cemetery and expect to come in. Um, bring friends. I think it's a kind of event that's fun to do with two or three of your friends. Dress for the weather. It is a walking tour. Yes. And uh, it is not a level cemetery. There we go. So um, who do we need to thank, Melissa, for all well, this wonderful? Well, we always want to thank the Tacoma Cemetery because they are very helpful on this whole thing. Let us use their facility. Keep it yes. up for us. Yes. Um, but also they have a... a, a tremendous value in research as well. They have the, the original handwritten death records mm -hmm. of everybody, oh. so sometimes you find little touches. And mm -hmm. because they are the cemetery also, they are in touch with the families. So as Deb kind of alluded to, if the family is still in town, the reenactors generally reach out to the family and say, oh, first of all, Amanda, is it okay if I portray your grandma? Yeah. You know, I don't want to. I don't want it's to. It's a do huge anything, thank you, know. you to them for it's all the details. It's a huge thank you to them, and then of course every year, the flowers are beautiful thanks to Brown's Flowers right across I the saw street from that. the cemetery. The flowers. They are, always on, do that for us. On top, on top of the headstones are just beautiful. It's nice. And, it's and you nice. want you want you want it to be that way year round. You really do. I want to say thank you to both of you for the time, the effort, and the passion that you put into this, because if we forget our history, we're doomed to repeat it. And that is also an homage to all the great things that came before us, too. We want to carry those forward. So thank you to you and to your team and your family who continues to make living history, really living history, um, because there are clues and there are lessons, I think, that help us navigate today's world, and you guys make it very easy to find those. So many, many thank you. Thank you. Can I just share one little thing? Nope. No? Can't tell you how we end every tour? Nope. Remember, you're the caretakers of the memories of oh, those who you told anyway. Before. All right, good. Did you do it? Thank, thank you, you both so much for being here. Thank you. When we come back after just a little bit of musical chairs, we will have the Grand Cinema here. Wade is here to talk about some of the new apparatuses they have. We'll be right back.